There are seven chapters to learn in Biology 1. Keeping healthy, coordination and control, medicine and drugs, adaptation, energy and ecosystems, genetics and evolution. Most people eat a varied diet which includes everything needed to keep the body healthy. Different people need different amounts of energy. The metabolic rate varies from person to person. The more exercise you take, the more food you need. If you take in more energy than you use, you will store the excess as fat. Obese people have more health problems than others. People who do not have enough to eat can develop serious health problems. Exercise helps reduce weight and maintain health. Inherited factors affect our health. These include our metabolic rate and cholesterol level. People who exercise regularly are usually healthier than people who take little exercise. Don't forget, your metabolic rate refers to the chemical reactions which take place in cells. The word malnourished can be used to describe people who do not have a balanced diet. They may have too little food or too much food, or take in the wrong combination of foods. Infectious diseases are caused by microorganisms called pathogens, such as bacteria and viruses. Bacteria and viruses reproduce rapidly inside your body. Bacteria can produce toxins which make you feel ill. Viruses damage your cells as they reproduce. This can also make you feel ill. Ignaz Semmelweis recognised the importance of hand washing in preventing the spread of infectious diseases in hospital. Your body has several methods of defending itself against the entry of pathogens using the skin, the mucus of the breathing system and the clotting of the blood. Your white blood cells help to defend you against pathogens by ingesting them, making antibodies and making antitoxins. Some medicines relieve the symptoms of disease but do not kill the pathogens which cause it. Antibiotics cure bacterial diseases by killing the bacteria inside your body. Antibiotics do not destroy viruses because viruses reproduce inside the cells. It is difficult to develop drugs that can destroy viruses without damaging your body cells. Remember, antibiotics are drugs which kill bacteria. Antibodies are produced by white blood cells to kill bacteria. An uncontaminated culture of microorganisms can be grown using sterilised petri dishes and agar. You sterilise the inoculating loop before use and seal the lid of the petri dish to prevent unwanted microorganisms getting in. The culture is left at about 25 degrees Celsius for a few days. Uncontaminated cultures are needed so we can investigate the effect of chemicals such as disinfectants and antibiotics on microorganisms. Cultures should be incubated at a maximum temperature of 25 degrees Celsius in schools and colleges to reduce the likelihood of harmful pathogens growing. Remember, make sure you understand why we sterilise. We boil solutions and heat treat apparatus in an autoclave to kill bacteria already in them. This is sterilising. Many types of bacterium have developed antibiotic resistance as a result of natural selection. To prevent the problem getting worse, we must not overuse antibiotics. If bacteria or viruses mutate, new strains of the pathogen can appear, causing disease. New strains of disease, which spread rapidly, can cause epidemics and pandemics. Antibiotics and vaccinations may not be effective against the new strain. Remember, washing hands removes the pathogens on them, but it may not kill the pathogens. Your white blood cells produce antibodies to destroy the pathogens. Then your body will respond rapidly to future infections by the same pathogen, by making the correct antibody. You become immune to the disease. You can be immunised against a disease by introducing small amounts of dead or inactive pathogens into your body. We can use vaccinations to protect against both bacterial and viral pathogens. Remember, high levels of antibodies do not stay in your blood forever. Immunity is the ability of your white blood cells to produce the right antibodies quickly if you are reinfected by a disease. Vaccination protects individuals and society from the effects of a disease. The treatment of disease has changed as our understanding of how antibiotics and immunity has increased.
The nervous system uses electrical impulses to enable you to react quickly to your surroundings and coordinate what you do. Cells called receptors detect stimuli, or changes in the environment. Like all animal cells, light receptor cells and other receptors have a nucleus, cytoplasm and cell membrane. Impulses from receptors pass along sensory neurons to the brain or spinal cord, the central nervous system. Impulses are sent along motor neurons from the brain to the effector organs. Make sure you're clear that motor means movement. Motor neurons stimulate the muscles to contract. And be careful to use the terms neuron and nerve correctly. Talk about impulses, not messages, travelling along a neuron. Some responses to stimuli are automatic and rapid and are called reflex actions. Reflex actions run everyday bodily functions and help you to avoid danger. Make sure you know the correct sequence of links from the receptor to the effector. Hormones control the release of an egg from the ovary and the build-up of the lining of the womb in the menstrual cycle. Some of the hormones involved are FSH from the pituitary gland and oestrogen from the ovary. Be clear on the difference between FSH and oestrogen. FSH causes eggs to mature and stimulates the ovary to produce oestrogen. Oestrogen causes the lining of the womb to develop, inhibits FSH production and stimulates the release of a mature egg. Make sure you know the difference between eggs maturing and eggs being released. Hormones can be used to control fertility. Oral contraceptives contain hormones which stop FSH production so no eggs mature. FSH can be used as a fertility drug for women to stimulate eggs to mature in their ovaries. These eggs may be used in IVF treatments. Humans need to maintain a constant internal environment, controlling levels of water, ions and blood sugar, as well as temperature. Homeostasis is the result of the coordination of your nervous system, your hormones and your body organs. Plants are sensitive to light, moisture and gravity. Plant responses are brought about by plant hormones, or auxins. The responses of roots and shoots to stimuli such as light and gravity are the result of the unequal distribution of plant hormones. We can use plant growth hormones as weed killers and as rooting hormones on cuttings. There are benefits and problems associated with the use of hormones to control fertility and these must be evaluated carefully. Plant hormones are very useful as weed killers but their use can damage the environment. When we develop new medicines, they have to be tested and trialled extensively before we can use them. Drugs are tested to see if they work well. We also make sure they are not too toxic and have no unacceptable side effects. Thalidomide was developed as a sleeping pill and was found to prevent morning sickness in early pregnancy. It had not been fully tested and it caused birth defects. Make sure you're clear that a medical drug is tested to establish its effectiveness, its toxicity and the most appropriate dose. And remember, the cells, tissues and animals act as models to predict how the drug may behave in humans. Statins lower the amount of cholesterol in the blood and can reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease by up to 40%. The effectiveness of both prescribed and non-prescribed drugs can only be measured in proper double-blind trials. Drugs change the chemical processes in your body, so you may become addicted to them. Addiction is when you become physically or mentally dependent on a drug. Smoking cannabis may cause mental health problems. Hard drugs such as cocaine and heroin are very addictive and can cause serious health problems. Many recreational drugs affect the nervous system, particularly the brain. Some are more harmful than others. Some recreational drugs are legal and others are illegal. The overall impact of legal drugs on health is much greater than illegal drugs because more people use them. People can progress from using recreational drugs such as cannabis to addiction to hard drugs because cannabis is illegal and has to be obtained from a drug dealer. Cannabis smoke contains chemicals which may cause mental illness in some people. Teenagers are particularly vulnerable to this effect. 
Anabolic steroids and other banned performance-enhancing drugs are used by some athletes. The use of performance-enhancing drugs is considered unethical by most people. Make sure you understand why athletes are banned from using some medical drugs. Organisms need a supply of materials from their surroundings and from other living organisms to survive and reproduce. Organisms have features or adaptations that enable them to survive in the conditions in which they normally live. Extremophiles have adaptations enabling them to live in extreme conditions of salt, temperature or pressure. Practice recognising plant and animal adaptations and try to work out where they might live from the adaptation. This will help in your examination where you may be asked to do the same. All living things have adaptations that help them to survive in the conditions where they live. Animals that are adapted for cold environments are often large with a small surface area to volume ratio. They have thick insulating layers of fat and fur. Changing coat colour in the different seasons gives animals year-round camouflage. Adaptations for hot, dry environments include a large surface area to volume ratio, thin fur, little body fat and behaviour patterns that avoid the heat of the day. Remember, the larger the animal, the smaller the surface area to volume ratio. Animals often have increased surface areas in hot climates and decreased surface areas in cold climates. Plants lose water vapour from the surface of their leaves. Plant adaptations for surviving in dry conditions include reducing the surface area of the leaves, having water storage tissues and having extensive root systems. Remember that plants need their stomata open for photosynthesis and respiration. This is why they lose water by evaporation from their leaves. Animals often compete with each other for food, territories and mates. Animals have adaptations that make them good competitors. Learn to look at an animal and spot the adaptations that make it a successful competitor. Plants often compete with each other for light, for water and for nutrients, minerals, from the soil. Plants have many adaptations that make them good competitors. Animals and plants may be adapted to cope with specific features of their environment e.g. thorns, poisons and warning colours. Environmental changes may be caused by living or non-living factors. Environmental changes can be measured using non-living indicators. Living organisms such as lichens can be used as indicators of pollution. Both living and non-living factors can cause changes in the environment that affect the distribution of living organisms. Reproducible data on the effect of environmental change are not always easy to collect or interpret. Radiation from the sun, solar or light energy, is the main source of energy for all living things. The sun's light energy is captured and used by green plants and algae during photosynthesis to make new biomass. Biomass is the dry mass of living material in an animal or plant. The mass of living material at each stage of a food chain is less than at the previous stage. The biomass at each stage can be drawn to scale and shown as a pyramid of biomass. Make sure you can draw pyramids of biomass when you are given the data. The amounts of biomass and energy get less at each successive stage in a food chain. This is because some material and energy are always lost in waste materials and some are used for respiration to supply energy for living processes including movement. Much of the energy is eventually transferred by heating to the surroundings. Make sure you can explain the different ways in which energy is lost between the stages of a food chain. Living things remove materials from the environment as they grow. They return them when they die through the action of the decomposers. Materials decay because they are broken down or digested by microorganisms. Microorganisms digest materials faster in warm, moist conditions. Many of them also need oxygen. The decay process releases substances that plants need to grow. In a stable community, the processes that remove materials, particularly plant growth, are balanced by the processes that return materials. The constant cycling of carbon in nature is known as the carbon cycle. Carbon dioxide is removed from the atmosphere by photosynthesis. It is returned to the atmosphere through respiration and combustion. Make sure you can label the processes in a diagram of the carbon cycle. 
Recycling organic kitchen and garden waste is necessary to reduce landfill, reduce the production of methane and to recycle the minerals and nutrients in the organic material. Composting organic waste can be done in a variety of different ways. Parents pass on genetic information to their offspring in the sex cells, or gametes. The genetic information is found in the nucleus of your cells. The nucleus contains chromosomes, and chromosomes carry the genes that control the characteristics of your body. Chromosomes are made of DNA. Different genes control the development of different characteristics. Make sure you know the difference between chromosomes, genes and DNA. In asexual reproduction, there is no joining of gametes and only one parent. There is no genetic variety in the offspring. The genetically identical offspring of asexual reproduction are known as clones. In sexual reproduction, male and female gametes join. The mixture of genetic information from two parents leads to genetic variety in the offspring. Remember, asexual reproduction involves one parent and produces clones. Sexual reproduction involves two parents and produces variety. The different characteristics between individuals of a family or species may be due to genetic causes, environmental causes or a combination of both. Remember, genes control the development of characteristics, but characteristics may be changed by the environment. New plant clones can be produced quickly and cheaply by taking cuttings from mature plants. The new plants are genetically identical to the older ones. A modern technique for cloning plants is tissue culture using cells from a small part of the original plant. Transplanting cloned embryos is one way in which animals are cloned. Remember, clones have identical genetic information. Make sure you are clear about the difference between a tissue and an embryo. Scientists cloned Dolly the sheep using adult cell cloning. In adult cell cloning, the nucleus of a cell from an adult animal is transferred to an empty egg cell from another animal. A small electric shock causes the egg cell to begin to divide and starts embryo development. The embryo is placed in the womb of a third animal to develop. The animal that is born is genetically identical to the animal that donated the original adult cell. Remember, animals can be cloned by using embryo transplants or by adult cell cloning. Genes can be transferred to the cells of animals and plants at an early stage of their development, so they develop desired characteristics. This is genetic engineering. In genetic engineering, genes from the chromosomes of humans and other organisms can be cut out using enzymes and transferred to the cells of bacteria and other organisms. There are advantages and disadvantages associated with genetic engineering. There are a number of economic, social and ethical issues concerning cloning and genetic engineering which need to be considered when making judgments about the use of this science. The theory of evolution states that all the species which are alive today, and many more which are now extinct, evolved from simple life forms that first developed more than 3 billion years ago. Darwin's theory is that evolution takes place through natural selection. Remember, avoid confusion between the theory of evolution and the process of natural selection. And remember the basic key stages in natural selection. Survive, breed, pass on genes. Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection was only gradually accepted for a number of reasons. These include a conflict with the widely held belief that God made all the animals and plants on the earth, insufficient evidence, and no mechanism for explaining variety and inheritance. Genetics were not understood for another 50 years. Natural selection works by selecting the organisms best adapted to a particular habitat. Different organisms in a species show a wide range of variation because of differences in their genes. The individuals with the characteristics most suited to their environment are most likely to survive and breed successfully. The genes that have produced these successful characteristics are then passed on to the next generation. Mutation is a change in the genetic material, DNA, which results in a new form of a gene. 
Studying the similarities and differences between organisms allows us to classify them into animals, plants and microorganisms. Classification also helps us to understand evolutionary and ecological relationships.